called The Unspoken Truth. There's a lot of uh, interesting facts in this one, and uh, if you're questioning any of them, there is MLA citation throughout, so you can check my work cited for yourself. <laughs> A light autumn breeze swept through Lincoln, Nebraska on September, 8, September 28, 1979. The face of what was soon to be Southeast Community College gazed east over seemingly endless farmland as Reverend Charles Wildman for the United Church of Christ began an invocational prayer shortly after 2 p.m. The day's dedication program gave high hopes and expectations for the newly consolidated campus and Nebraska history's least clairvoyant Lieutenant Governor, Roland Lukey finally looked out over the crowd. He may have known that this event was going to forever change the future of Southeast Nebraska, but he couldn't quite foresee that the best was yet to come. Over the next 34 years, the East Campus and Southeast Community College will undergo multiple phases of renovation and expansion, leading to the construction of the most unsung hero of Lincoln, Nebraska's modern age, SEC Parking Lot D. <laughs> Southeast Community College, or SCC as it's more affectionately known, enrolls over 9,000 students each year. With nine lots offering a total of 2,498 parking spaces, it's not difficult to see Lot D as just another couple hundred parking spaces. Lots A through H offer easy access, some with multiple entrances, but Lot D was cut from a different cloth with one road dedicated solely to entering the lot, and another right beside it dedicated solely to exiting, this lot has been atypical from the very beginning. When SCC was first dedicated in the year of our Lord, 1979, the area Lot D now occupies was just farmland. The exact date that this lot became a reality, sorry, the exact date that the dream of this lot became a reality has been lost to the ages. Swallowed up by the vast tidal waves of lucubratory information that have crested and broken across the school's strong brick walls for decades. SCC's Lincoln Campus Learning Resource Center Director Joe Shimon postulates that the lot may have been built in tandem with any of the additions that were made to the facility before 2007, since expansion of the building increased the demand for parking. Like the secrets of Atlantis herself, we may never discover an accurate history of Lot D, even for years to come. But it's not the history of this lot that makes it special. At first glance, the layout of the lot tells you that its designers wanted raw, unbridled convenience. <laughs> the parking spaces themselves run perfectly parallel, making every row a two-way street. The second striking quality is its size. Lot D has over 200 spaces. From the three-quarter ton diesel pickup to your Uncle Ron's 1986 Volkswagen Golf, there's room enough for any kind of personal vehicle in this lot. Somewhere along the way, though, Lot D stepped up its game tremendously, doubling its efforts to provide not only parking spaces, but an area for students in SCC's semi-truck driving and driver's ed programs to demonstrate and test their training in a hands-on classroom environment. Some of, the lot's most unfortunate, <clears throat> some of the lot's most important features aren't easy to see. Like a secret on the lips of two lovers, it takes time and attention to earn a glimpse of what this lot truly offers. If one, looks, if one looks carefully and with the right eyes, this lot coyly presents an even deeper purpose. Day and night, matriculators, young and old alike, park their cars in Lot D, sometimes leaving inside them their most priceless possessions. Lot D, with its ample lighting and open space, selflessly provides a safe space for these cars and the possessions within. This space, however, isn't just safe for the cars and their contents. Lot D, ever the silent sentinel, propagates an emotionally safe atmosphere for students to mentally prepare for the education that lies ahead of them. When students have finished the day's work, Lot D affords them all the time in the world to decompress from the struggles that they've faced inside the school and out in the world. Through Pavlovian conditioning, Lot D provides students with their first step towards the day's education thereby subconsciously preparing them to face the challenges of the day and the challenges of life. <laughs> By providing convenient, worry-free parking, a judgment-free space, and a platform on which to take the first step towards the rest of our lives, this lot effectively influences the lives of thousands of people. Without complaining a single time, this lot, since the day its pavement dried, expanded the capacity of Southeast Community College. 
By expanding the capacity of an affordable institution of higher education, Lot D affords a larger percent of Southeast Nebraska the opportunity to gain vocational training and to develop citizens into a more effective, intelligent workforce. As Southeast Nebraska's qualified workforce increases, so too does the quality of life that Nebraska's citizens enjoy. In much the same way that a candle loses nothing by lighting another candle, these opportunities make an impact on those around us, increasing the size of our historical footprint without requiring much effort on our own parts. As we walk from Lot D to the parking lot of life, we transplant the seeds of our human experience, including our thoughts, our hopes, and our dreams along the way, like dandelion seeds blowing in the wind. By inconspicuously providing the loving oversight and parking capacity that makes all this possible, Lot D opens the door for students to take the necessary steps towards bettering their lives, their community, and consequently the world itself. But Lot D isn't alone in this silent crusade to peacefully change the world. As the secrets revealed themselves to me, I found countless parallels to the sacrifice all around me. It appears Lot D is just one of a number of nameless a number in a nameless fraternity that clandestinely serves humanity's purest needs. Upon reflection, I found that gravity has been keeping humans as grounded and down to earth as possible since day one. The interstate, the interstate highway system has been working to tirelessly connect the country since Dwight D. Eisenhower signed the Federal Highway Act of 1956. And the ozone layer. The ozone layer slaves thanklessly for millennia just to give us the opportunity to catch our breath. As sure as death and taxes, Law D, gravity, the interstate, and the ozone layer act as a brotherhood of eternal guides, never taking a break and always providing us with exactly what we need. But near the turn of the century, it looked like the ozone layer had decided to call it quits. Al Gore began performing his political rendition of, I wish you would step back from that ledge, my friend. And lo and behold, the scientific community reveled in what appeared to be the ozone layer repairing itself. Did the ozone layer hear Al Gore's pleas to step back from that ledge? Perhaps. But this law D theorist believes the answer may be even simpler than that. As I previously stated, the exact date of law D's creation has been speculated to be pre-2007. If law D was in fact created near the turn of the century, it stands to reason that perhaps the ozone layer, having a fresh new member added to the Brotherhood, found a renewed sense of purpose and renewed its sacred duty of keeping the Earth's atmosphere more comfortable than the jacuzzi tub on a whole winter night. Could this just be coincidental timing? Seems a little too coincidental if you ask me. <laughs> Bashful as ever, Lot D declined to comment when, I, when asked how it feels about the unconsidered role it plays in the advancement of the human race. But such is the plight of their kind. The lighthouse is only a beacon of hope for those who look for one. The silent ba these silent bastions of peace and progress are forever in thankless obscurity, never asking for the recognition or honor they deserve. Instead, the people they benefit thoughtlessly use and take for granted their gifts as they mindlessly move themselves forward on the march to a better life. And I think that's just the way Lot D likes it. In the end, the lesson we can learn from Lot D is that selfless sacrifice isn't always pretty, but the footprint it can leave behind has the potential to echo throughout eternity. We ourselves may not get the glory, but the result of the deed is glory enough.